if you're someone who's very left-brained and analytical like I am, then when you're faced with a problem, you try and solve it. And the way you try and solve it is by thinking through it analytically. The problem is that you cannot architect perfect solutions to open wild problems and big questions like what should I do with my life or what business should I start or what should I direct my energy into and even if you think you have the perfect solution which you've come to through some sort of analytical process it's often a fleeting moment of clarity that ends up disappearing especially if you don't take action you end up right back to where you were which is feeling stuck and uncertain. I know this because I've done it time and time again. I would feel stuck and so I'd venture down this path of rational analysis and planning. I'd try to think my way out of it. It was the absolute embodiment of mid-curvism, right? You have the meme with the two people on each side. One's the, the stupid guy, but he just does things. The other's the high IQ person who just does things. And then the middle person is like the overthinker, which is me. So I'd go and book a hotel room for two days to go and think through things. I'd gain some clarity. I'd feel confident in the path forward. And then I'd be back to where I was a few days or weeks later. My thinking hadn't really achieved anything because it was non-generative. I'd tell myself constantly that I needed to step back and look at the big picture when really I needed to execute on the small but obvious things in front of me. And so this is the first reframe. It's that you cannot architect perfect solutions to this kind of feeling of stuckness. The only way you get out of it 99% of the time is by taking action, generative action on something. I want to share another point which expands this and, and builds the frame a little bit more. And that is that it is better to learn to operate while feeling stuck than to constantly view it as a problem to solve. Hidden below the surface is this lie that you tell yourself. It is a lie that hinders your ability to be effective. That lie is that I need to get unstuck before I can really get ahead. If I could just get unstuck and gain clarity, then I'll act, then I'll feel good about myself, then I'll have confidence, then I'll get results. And if you tell yourself this lie, then what you're doing is you're mentally orienting yourself around this feeling of being stuck, around how stuck you feel. And if you do this, then you'll always feel stuck because you're always dwelling on it, right? If there's cake in the fridge and you're constantly telling yourself to avoid eating the cake that's in the fridge, you're eventually going to eat it because that's what you're dwelling on. And so it becomes this sort of self-reinforcing feedback loop. You define yourself by how stuck you feel, your impulse is to seek the inverse of that feeling, which leads you to constantly ask, how do I get unstuck? But that question of how do I get unstuck is the exact question that then encourages the perfect solution architect approach that I mentioned earlier. Only further perpetuates the cycle because you're thinking about being stuck, you're not doing anything, and you get trapped in this prison of theoretical mid-curving without actually moving forward. You just go around in circles. And so the reframe here, which I think is very useful and has been useful to me, is quite a stoic one. And that is to simply notice that you feel stuck and then do something anyway. If you're watching this video, you have a baseline level of competence and agency that allows you to just do things. You chose to click on this video. You can also choose to just work on something to just do a task. It really doesn't matter what you do because action for the sake of action is far more powerful than whatever high IQ approach you think that you need to take because action for the sake of action is generative. It actually leads to change in your world. It gives you feedback. It gives you signal. It gives you intuitive data. Now, this change might not always be pleasant. It quite often isn't. It might not always lead to good outcomes in the present but over a long enough time horizon it will lead to better outcomes than the previously discussed alternative which is just looping around in theory land and overthinking and trying to find those perfect solutions and here's a question for you what would you do if you couldn't ever shake this feeling of being stuck or this uncertainty that lingers around you what if for the rest of your life, you will always feel this way to some extent? I mean, it will come up, it will come down, it will vary in its intensity. But what if it never goes away? 
I don't think this is a hypothetical question. I think this is the reality for a lot of people, including myself. And so what if it's just going to stay there? What if it just rears its ugly head every so often for the rest of your life? Are you going to let it neutralize you? Are you going to let it spiral you into analysis paralysis? Or are you going to learn how to operate through it and how to act anyway? And to acknowledge that it's something that exists, but is also something that is limited in its power. If that is true, that this thing is always going to be there, and it could be true, what are you going to do? You're not just going to accept it. You're going to do something. You're going to take action anyway because the alternative kind of sucks. You're going to do things to suppress this feeling, to make that voice quieter and quieter. And the way you do that is through taking action, to be in that action state, actually doing things, doing work. While I'm recording this video, I don't feel stuck. I'm doing work, right? Even though I'm talking about this concept, I can sense the voice, you know, it's there below the surface. I might have a moment later today where I start feeling this way again and I'll probably start to second guess things and I might even second guess putting out this video because that happens too. I feel the urge to architect perfect solutions again, but right now it's quiet because I'm in motion and I'm doing things and that's the way it should be because man is made for action and feeling stuck is more a symptom of non-action than it is a cause, which is the next point I want to make. I want you to reflect on how you got stuck in the first place. Chances are you didn't act your way into it, you likely fell into it. Inch by inch, slowly, subconsciously, until it became this very strong sort of voice in your head. Now, of course, there are problems that you act your way into all the time. You can get stuck as a result of your actions. You can believe that it's right for you to go and start a business, and then you're three years in and you feel stuck and you realize it is not what you should be doing. But that's a different kind of stuck to the one I'm talking about. Even if it's incredibly uncomfortable, it's very defined, right? It's like, well, I should not be doing this. I need to get my way out of this. The stuck that I'm talking about looks like stasis. It looks like overthinking, analysis paralysis, not even knowing what the problem really is. And that is a result of non-action far more than it is a cause. When I reflect back on the times where I felt most stuck in this kind of sense, my output, my consistency, my intensity, my aggression towards life has declined. Usually it's preceded that feeling of being stuck. I've taken my foot off the gas pedal. I've stopped doing as much. I've stopped leaning into challenge. I've cycled through things in my head and then I've ended up feeling kind of stuck and uncertain. Non-action is what's led me into that state. And if non-action is what leads you into that state, then its inverse is what will get you out. Not necessarily straight away, but it will happen as long as you just get yourself in motion. But maybe you want to stay stuck. You feel stuck because you're not growing. You know that challenge and tension are necessary for psychological flourishing. But Change and action are uncomfortable. Change and action feel risky sometimes and we crave homeostasis. Our lower self will do all that it can to keep us in that state of non-action so we can conserve energy. Of course, we never want to admit to ourselves or others that we're choosing to stay comfortable and not grow. I'll tell you what I used to do all the time. I still do it, it's something I'm working on. I'd be faced with an opportunity, something that would lead to personal growth, momentum, greater heights, but also something that would eject me from my comfort zone, which is usually what happens when you want to grow. You have to do things that are uncomfortable. Instead of attacking the opportunity and embracing the discomfort, I would immediately start analyzing whether I should pursue the opportunity or not. I'm not talking about thinking about it. I'm talking analyzing. I'd engage in this mid-curve theory crafting, perfect architecture solution, non-generative overthinking cycle. I would say to myself and others, and if you're watching this and you know me, then you'll laugh. I'd say things like, I'm not sure this is right for me because of this and this. And, you know, Naval says like, I should do what feels like play to me. And I don't know if this feels like play. Um, so maybe I should double down on this instead. And I would inevitably end up feeling stuck because I hadn't chosen action. I constructed a terrace of excuses for why I shouldn't take action. And it took me a while to painfully admit to myself that the reason I was feeling stuck and uncertain was because on some level I wanted to be. I was used to it. It was the comfort zone. 
I could afford to stay there. Yeah, I hated it, really. Like it wasn't fun, it wasn't comfortable, but it was comfortable enough. It was certainly more comfortable than taking action. It takes a lot less energy to craft excuses than to take action on something. As a rule, the more sophisticated the excuses, the more bullshit they likely are. If an action really shouldn't be taken, then you should simply be able to state why it shouldn't be taken, not come up with an entire narrative in your head about why you shouldn't do it. To end this video, and this is again really a note to self, you have to change or you will be changed. I know it's cliche, you can't remain stuck where you are forever. Yeah, you can remain stuck in a certain mentality, but the conditions around you will change. If you choose non-action again and again, then eventually bad things will happen. Your career will crumble, your business will fail, your relationship might fragment, and you will feel pain. If you don't intentionally change, you don't take action in the present to get unstuck, then change will eventually be forced upon you by external events, life events, failure, what have you. But I don't think you should wait for those things to happen. And I don't think that you think you should wait for those things to happen either. Let's come back to action. You don't take action because you're not certain about the path ahead or you lack clarity or you feel stuck or whatever. How long are you prepared to live by that operating system? 10 years from now, will you be glad that you waited for some ethereal clarity that may or may not come? Probably won't. Or will you be glad that you took action? despite your uncertainty, doubts, and fears. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.